Are you moving? Here are the top 10 tips I share with my clients for packing their house. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Samantha Perlman and I'm a realtor located in central New Jersey. Every week I post videos about what it's like to live and work here and guidance on buying, selling, and investing in the area. If this is something that interests you, consider hitting that subscribe button below and the bell so you don't miss the new videos I release every week. This week I'll be sharing with you the top 10 tips, say that 10 times fast, that I share with my clients when they're packing and getting ready for their move. Now all of the advice and tips I'm gonna share with you, most of them have actually come from my own personal experience. You see, I've moved six times in 12 years across three different states. My husband and I joked when we moved into the house we're in now that we are never going to move again because we are so sick of packing and moving. Now online, through videos and blogs, there's so many different things out there in terms of moving tips and packing tips that I could go on for days and days. But the 10 tips I'm gonna share with you today are the ones that you don't see as common on these lists and the ones that I found to be the most helpful during my moves and what I share with my clients. Number one, start early. Do not wait to the last minute to begin the packing process. It is always going to take you longer than you actually think it's going to. Start by packing one room at a time. Start with the rooms and the items that you use the least frequently. So maybe that might be a guest bedroom or a storage room or an office. If you plan on selling any items, certainly start that process at least four to six weeks before you move because it could take some time for items to sell. The earlier you start the process, the less things you put off to the last minute, the less stress you actually add to the entire process of packing and moving, which is already a pretty stressful process to begin with. Number two, use the correct size boxes. Now I will tell you that it is very tempting to take a large box and shove as many things in it as possible, thinking to yourself, well, that'll be less boxes I'll need to move. But the reality is use the correct size box and sometimes smaller boxes are actually better. Especially if you're packing heavy items, do not pack a lot of heavy items in an extremely large box. Whether you're moving yourself or hiring movers, it's gonna be difficult. So pack heavier items in smaller boxes. Number three, recycle packing materials. Ask around for your coworkers, your friends, or family if they have any packing materials laying around the house. Maybe somebody you know just made a move and they've got moving boxes and saran wrap and bubble wrap and items that they either have left over or may not have actually used. Ask if you can use or borrow them. You can also go to local retailers and local big box stores and ask them if you can take some of their boxes that they might be recycling. And I've also had a ton of luck on sites like Craigslist to find free packing and moving materials that other people are looking to get rid of after they've had a big move. I've actually was able to snag 10 free wardrobe boxes on Craigslist a few years ago, which if any of you know out there, those wardrobe boxes, if you were to rent or purchase them are quite expensive. And I got 10 for free on Craigslist. Now certainly I'm also gonna encourage you when you're done with the whole process to continue to recycle those items by offering them to somebody else for free as well. Number four, use whatever you have. To cut down on the cost of packing materials, use some of the soft furnishings that you already have. Dish towels are great for wrapping things in the kitchen. Um, you can also use socks for stemware and utensils. I've even used t-shirts to wrap up fragile items as well. You can also use items around your house as a replacement for boxes. Things like hampers, suitcases, baskets, and other decorative boxes can be used to pack items in as well for the move. Number five, label everything. This includes both the contents of the box and the room the box belongs to. Bedroom to bedroom, kitchen to kitchen. This is gonna help your movers or yourself when you're unloading to be able to put the boxes in the appropriate rooms. And if you really wanna be organized, you can even consider color coding the labels on the boxes by either purchasing colored moving labels or just using colored masking tape or duct tape. Number six. Know what doesn't get packed in the moving truck. There are always gonna be items that are gonna be recommended to not pack in a moving truck and items that you actually can't pack in a moving truck if you're hiring professionals. Consider packing and moving severely fragile items like family heirlooms in your own vehicle. I've also learned from personal experience that you should transport your plants in your own vehicle and do not put those in the moving truck. Killed many plants doing that. And then some dangerous items that really shouldn't be packed in a moving truck, whether you're doing it yourself or with movers, are things like paint, painting supplies, fire extinguishers, cleaning chemicals like ammonia, auto batteries, gas cans, and more. If you have any questions about what can or can't be put in the moving truck, ask your professional. 
And a last item I recommend my clients actually move themselves in their own vehicle is any of the food from the refrigerator. That could be packed away into a cooler. And the reason I suggest you do it yourself is because it could be one of the last things you pack before the move and one of the first things you unpack when you get to your new place. This way none of the food gets spoiled. Number seven, save a box or two for the morning of. Now this is a packing lesson that I learned probably my second or third move. And that is there is always going to be items that you're going to find in the home, in cabinets or in closets or in hiding spaces or even under furniture as you're moving the furniture and moving out that you're going to need to pack away. So make sure you save one or two or three boxes aside open and ready to be packed for the morning of. This way, as you're packing furniture and you're loading up the truck and you're finding all of these miscellaneous items, that you have a place to put them. And this brings me to tip number eight, packing a moving day kit. Aside from having empty boxes ready to be packed if needed on the morning up, you also wanna make sure you pack yourself a moving kit of other items you're gonna need, both as you're loading the truck and moving out and unloading in the new place. This moving kit should include things like cleaning supplies, paper towels, toilet paper, garbage bags, paper plates, cups, napkins, and eating utensils. And don't forget your chargers for things like your phone, tablet, and laptop. This moving kit will also include an overnight bag for yourself. So make sure you pack things like your toiletries, clothes. I suggest packing clothes for several days in case you can't get all of your clothes unpacked right away. Make sure to pack your shower toiletries, a towel, and if you need a shower curtain at your new home, make Make sure you bring that as well because there's nothing like taking a nice hot shower after a long day of moving number nine pick a staging room or area in your house as you pack now this may not always be possible depending on the size of your space but if you can do it i recommend you take one room in your house or one area of your home and you pack that first and you use that as a packing staging area that means as you pack your boxes you have one central location where all of them can live this helps keep you nice and organized and keeps it from feeling like you're literally tripping over boxes as you pack your house. It also makes moving really easily because you yourself or the professional movers can go to one location to start loading up the boxes to the truck. And number 10, my last tip is don't freak out. Stuff happens. No matter how well you've prepared, how much bubble wrap you've used, how many moving blankets you've used on the furniture, inevitably something gets nicked, scratched, or broken. This is why I recommended earlier to pack all of the most valuable items, things like family heirlooms, and the most fragile items yourself in your own vehicle. This way, if anything does get damaged in the big moving truck, it shouldn't be any of your most valuable items. And as long as you mentally prepare that that might happen, when you're unloading and you see that there is a scratch on that furniture, it's a little bit easier to digest. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and say hello in the comment section below. And if you know anybody that can benefit from the information I've shared here today, please share the video with them. Thank you so much for watching this week. I really hope you found this information helpful. Let me know in the comment section below if you like this type of topic and you want to see more of it. I actually found some packing hacks online that I kind of want to test out. So let me know if that's something you're interested in seeing and maybe that'll be a future video. This week I talked about packing. Next week I'm going to be talking about moving specifically and some of the top tips I share with my clients. And if you haven't already done so, consider hitting that subscribe button below and the bell so you don't miss the new videos I release every week. I'll see you next week.